Hey Grace Kids, welcome back to the last week of our Connected series. I'm EY. And I'm Connor. <laughs> you know what I had to, I don't know why, it like <laughs> overcame me. Kids, welcome back to the last week of our Connected series. I'm EY. And I'm Connor. We've been talking all about how God helps us treat people with kindness. You can show kindness by caring for the people around you, like friends or family. I was thinking, if we want to be kind to the people around us, then first, we've got to get to know them. We can start by getting to know people right here in this room. I bet there are lots of things that we can learn about each other that we didn't know before. Let's give it a try with a really fun game. Know your neighbor. It's easy to play. If I call out something that's true about you, stand up. Take a look at the people around you and see who's standing. Then, if you're standing, sit back down so we can be ready for the next one. Cool? Cool. Let's get started. Stand up if you're wearing red. Stand up if you have short hair. Stand up if you had eggs for breakfast. Stand up if you had cereal for breakfast. Stand up if you can throw a football. Stand up if you can braid hair. Stand up if you like to read. Stand up if you can write your name. Stand up if you like to dance. Stand up if you've ever eaten popcorn. All right, now everyone sit down and let's watch our Bible story. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 4, verses 14 through 30. Even though Jesus was on this earth for 33 years, there's still not much we know about his first 30 years. We do know that he visited Jerusalem for the Passover feast with his parents. He learned carpentry skills from his father, Joseph. And when he was about 30, he went down to the Jordan River and asked his cousin, John, to baptize him in the water. It is right for us to do this. It carries out God's holy plan. As Jesus rose from the water, God's voice called out from heaven. This is my son, and I love him. I am very pleased with him. It was an incredible way for Jesus to begin his ministry. After 40 days in the wilderness alone with God, Jesus returned to Galilee, filled with the Spirit of God. Anytime he visited a new town, he went to the place of worship, the synagogue, to teach the people. You are the light of the world. Isn't he just the bee's knees? Everywhere Jesus went, people were amazed and praised his teaching. That is, until he got to Nazareth, the town where he had grown up. Well, if it isn't Carpenter Boy Jesus. Hey man, where you been? We hear you talk real big now. On the Sabbath day, Jesus went into the synagogue. An attendant handed him a rolled papyrus. The scroll of Isaiah. Isaiah was a prophet who lived hundreds of years before Jesus, and God had spoken to Isaiah about a Messiah who had come to rescue God's people, and Isaiah had written down every word. Watch that papyrus as you unroll it, a bit crackly. Jesus stood before the crowd of worshipers and unrolled the scroll until he came to the right place. The Spirit of the Lord is on me. He has anointed me to announce the good news to poor people. He has sent me to announce freedom for prisoners. He has sent me so that the blind will see again. He wants me to set free those who are treated badly. And he has sent me to announce the year when he will set his people free. There was silence as Jesus rolled up the scroll and sat back down. Everyone stared. 
Today, this passage of scripture is coming true as you listen. (gasps) Jesus hadn't just read some dry, dusty, ancient words. Jesus had declared that he was God's Messiah, that he was there to announce good news and bring freedom to the poor, the hurting, and those who had been mistreated. Well, he's Joseph's son, isn't he? He can't be the Messiah. What I'm about to tell you is true. A prophet is not accepted in his hometown. (laughs) Words are easy. He calls himself a prophet? I studied with him on those benches right over there. Thinks he's something special because he can read a scroll. All around the synagogue, people rose to their feet, glaring. They turned on Jesus. You are not welcome here anymore. That's right. We don't need you making things up. The people were so angry they forced Jesus out of the synagogue. He allowed them to herd him straight through the village all the way to a cliff on the edge of town. Get rid of him! Throw him down! But Jesus simply turned and looked at the people, sorrow in his eyes. The men and women that he'd known and loved growing up wouldn't accept who he was. The crowd couldn't face Jesus. In their anger, they had missed the whole point that Jesus had come to make things right for those who were hurting and overlooked. Jesus walked right through the crowd, away from the cliff edge. They parted to let him go through. Then he left Nazareth and went on to Capernaum where he continued to carry out his mission. You see, that day in Nazareth, Jesus was announcing what he had come to do. He had come to care for people and bring them hope, healing, and freedom. And that's what he did. He died on a cross to pay for the sins of the entire world. The truth is, Jesus lived a life of kindness. He saw people who were normally overlooked, and he helped people who were hurting. When we follow Jesus, he teaches us to live that way too. So if we want to follow Jesus, then the things that are important to Jesus will be important to us too. Jesus showed compassion, and so should we. And we don't have to do it alone. When we put our trust in Jesus, we have his Holy Spirit to help us. That reminds me of our bottom line for today. Following Jesus means showing kindness to others. Can you say that with me? Following Following Jesus Jesus means showing showing kindness kindness to to others. others. One more time. Following Following Jesus Jesus means showing kindness kindness to to others. others. That can mean that you draw a picture or write a note to encourage someone who's sick. Or maybe you take time to listen and be a friend to someone who's sad or lonely. All of us have times when we feel overlooked or left out. We know how important it is to show people kindness. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for this reminder of why compassion is so important to you. Jesus said that he had to come to show us compassion, to bring hope and healing, and to show love to people who were in need. We wanna follow Jesus, and we know that means we should show compassion too. Help us care about others and be ready to act when we see someone who needs our help. We love you, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That's all we have for this week, guys. Bye.